Okay, so... I've just, just been brought to my attention that we've been doing this for about an hour, and uh, at around the 50 minute mark, I said, now we're getting somewhere. So, I'm going to skip doing skills, and I'm just going to go right through equipment. And actually, I'm not even going to bother going through the whole equipment buying process, but I don't think that character creation will be complete without at least giving you a sense of what the equipment section is like. Now, we mentioned earlier that my character had $200,000 to spend, and uh, there are some um, expensive items on here. So, for instance, a solar-powered television costs $5 million, so I won't be using, getting any of those. But uh, a lighter costs a buck. Um, and uh, flint and steel costs a dollar. I'm not sure why you would buy flint and steel when you could buy a lighter. I guess it doesn't run out of fuel. Um, and clothing can be up to $1,000. Uh, each item has its own uh, life points. And then we've got this uh, section on uh, the substances items can be made out of. Natural substances, alien substances, what kind of power sources they might have. So if you want to create your own items, there's uh, pretty good... Uh, Pretty good resources available. Now, here's handheld weapons. And this is pretty much your D&D weapons list, only even shorter, right? No glaives or glaive vulges or lucerne hammers or what have you. Uh, so, I think it's kind of assumed that, you know, I, I'm going to get myself a longsword. It's there 50 bucks, and I've got $200,000. And, effectively, I've got three hit points. So, it's about the minimum damage anything can do is 100 life points. And I've got 270 of them. So... Uh, I can't take a whole lot of damage, so I'm going to need to be doing a lot of parrying. But why would I use this when I can use my Sonic Saber that I summon out of whatever? So, the projectile weapons, you know, I can get myself a crossbow for 150 bucks, I guess. Or, I could get myself a machine gun, or this, this uh, shotgun with extra clip, or a turbo laser rifle. It's not just a laser rifle, it's turbo. So, uh, but what's really interesting to me about this is that easily the longest section of the weapons that I've, I've looked at so far is missiles. This is the missiles section. And it's, I mean, it's as long as the section for hand-to-hand -hand weapons and projectile weapons combined. And it goes on to the next page. Uh, and it is the 80s -est thing about this game. And this is a game that is pretty 80s. Let me just read you the names of some of these missiles. Thunderer, Tiger Shark, Blue, Green, and Red Thunderbolts, Maverick Hornet, Maverick Wolf, Falcon Talon, Falcon Strike, Falcon Claw, Cobra Shadow, Cobra Fang, Cobra Venom, Cobra Bite, Trident, Spear, Destroyer, Viper, Ship Killer, and Planet Smasher, which costs $500 million and does 200 million to 12 billion life points of damage. <laughs> so I'm not going to be shooting any of those at any one soon. So I can get myself a shield, like a full-size shield, costs a hundred bucks, but why would I do that when I could get myself a passive Bendix field belt, which generates uh, the, it, oh, it's the most powerful shield in existence, which is good because it costs 500 million dollars, which I don't have. Uh, or a suit of power armor, and the Juggernaut class power armor, a snip at 266 million dollars. Um, a dirigible, a pedal-powered gyrocopter, an ultralight, a sailboat, uh, a Hadrathus class suit of power armor, uh, some spaceships, or aeroplanes. There are aeroplanes in here, actually, that, that I think that's meant to be a plane. Uh, the turboprop falcon, or I could get an anti-gravity sled, uh, a horsey. They're only 50 bucks. I'm give me one of them. Heck, I could afford to ride around on a paradrake, which is a little dragon. With up to 10,000 life points. Uh, that goes 200 miles an hour. Uh, and has all kinds of stats. Um, or I could get some cybernetics. Like a, a, a dart gun on my arm. That's $150,000. Might, might be too expensive for me. Uh, you know. Um, or I could get the enhanced hearing modification. For merely $100,000 per ear. Again we have to determine which side of my head. The things I was listening to. Or I could get myself. Some uh, Terminite Explosives, $6,000 an ounce. Uh, jet Thrusters in my legs for $100,000. Um, ooh, drugs. I could get some Breathium, which, or maybe it's Breathium, which allows me to survive without air. Don't mix with Talamine. Violent cramps will kill the user 90% of the time. So there's, I mean, there's, you know, there's negative side effect interactions of the different drugs that you can buy, which is, 
I am absolutely astounded that there aren't detailed handheld weapons like okay, there are samurai swords which cost four times as much as a uh, as ordinary swords, but amazingly are more fragile, do the same amount of damage, and, uh, and, uh, they, oh, they weigh slightly less, but other than that, there's not really a difference, other than that you can use them with the martial arts skill. I am, if you had told me that the world of Cinnabar would not give extensive, detailed sub-rules for samurai swords, and how they were better than regular swords, I, I would never have believed you. It is the most glaring absence of 1991 headbandism in this game so far. It, it's actually astonishing to me. Um, and it has got a little picture of a hunkamunka in among the handheld weapons. That's kind of cute. Uh, and it's not full of sword drawings. Like, every other piece of art in this thing looks like the inside back page of a 14-year-old's notebook. But there aren't picture after picture after picture of swords. I mean, there's a ninja holding a sword that the blade is on sideways, but... For the most part, this seems like a bizarre oversight to me. I, I'm actually really surprised. Um, there is a note right next to the listing for the solar, solar power TV that drinking alcoholic beverages during pregnancy can cause mutations. And, uh, yeah. Well, considering that we live in a world where a pint of alcohol costs a dollar, uh, maybe that's something they really feel like they have to be concerned about. Okay, well look, I'm going to go away and I'm going to approximate the skills for this character and I'm going to spend a lot of time equipment shopping and if you want, you can look at my blog, uh, gonzohistorygaming.blogspot.co.uk uh, and see ballworthy Jay Raddington in his full splendor. Uh, however, if you have the World of Cinnabar and you'd like to, to tell me about your character, uh, you should go lie down for a bit. Um, but you can do it over on the blog, and, and I will try. Um, yeah, it's that kind of game. Uh, I, I'm a little less convinced of this game's lightheartedness now that I've been through its absurdly complicated character creation system. I will say, however, that this character creation system does give you a tremendous amount of diversity. Like, when they say that you can come up with, I mean, they say you can come create anything you can think of, which would only be true if you had a relatively limited imagination. Like, you really like to think of, you know, martial artists with cat ears and dragons with bull whips. But it can create a tremendously wide variety of characters, and those characters are all, as far as I can tell, mechanically quite distinct from each other. It's not like, you know, Hero Quest 2, you can create any character you can think of, but pretty much that character's going to be, you know... Some stats at 17, some stats at 13, and one stat at one mastery one. Like, mechanically, those characters aren't going to be very dissimilar to each other. So here, it does seem like they are. And the price for that, of course, is huge complexity. Uh, that the only way to distinguish all these characters is to have rules that are tremendously uh, varied and detailed. Um, I'm not sure they add anything else in the level of detail. Like I said... Uh, earlier that the system has tremendous complexity, but that doesn't seem to add any tactical depth, realism, uh, or, or any of the other things that you create extra rules to do. But what it does seem to create is diversity. There's a wide range of different things for characters to be good at, which I guess is, particularly if, as it seems, um, uh, I'm, I'm going to be dying and creating new characters a lot. Uh, Anyway, so that's Cinnabar Character Creation. I hope you've enjoyed it more than I did. Um, like I said, uh, check out the rest of the week of Cinnabar on, uh, on gonzohistorygaming.blogspot.co.uk. I'm going to go to the bathroom because I've been sitting here for an hour and a half.